How's it going everybody? Nick Daniels here. Uh, before we get into the video, I just want to say something here. I know you're probably surprised. Uh, yes, we are still going to be walking and making videos. <laughs> just because I have a car now um, doesn't mean that was going to change, but uh, you know, I'm just making sure you all know that uh, we're sticking with it. Um, so we're going to walk around the subdivision here tonight. We're actually going to try to be a little bit ballsy here. Uh, normally I try to hide inside the trails, but I'm kind of worried about bugs. Uh, there's been a lot of mosquitoes and shit out lately the last few nights, and uh, I have a bad feeling if I go out there, I'm going to get eaten alive, uh, normally where I go by the river. So uh, anyway, today's video, we're going to talk about um, drinking and driving, which I know can be a sensitive issue for a lot of people. Now just to my GoPro flash and blue there, hopefully that's not a bad sign. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I don't know what it's trying to do. But uh, anyway, so something like I said, drinking driving, you know, like I said, can be a very sensitive issue because, you know, a lot of people are affected by that, whether it's somebody they know, um, right, like a close family member, friend of a friend, whatever. And the, the, the sad reality of the situation uh, is really this is normally when someone's affected by that so drinking and driving uh normally it's not really them being affected in a good way and i kind of i kind of hate to say that because ah, fuck it's true like it, it's absolutely true like you don't hear people say like oh you know drinking driving yada 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 it was a good thing no 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 if that's the case it's bad now if you're you've been living under a rock for a couple of years uh i'll break it down for you real quick but basically uh, my version anyway of break, uh, drinking and driving and then of course I'll tell you uh, at least Canada and Nova Scotia's um, version might be a little different but my I think my, I kind of look at it a little more strictly um, the way I've kind of always looked at drinking and driving is basically if you have any alcohol in the system that's technically drinking and driving you know and I, I, I know people well, argue that they'll say i had a beer three hours ago i'm good to go right i am good and i'm not going to argue that right you, you you probably will be good right you probably be fine but i still think it should classify as drinking and driving if someone still has you know the one little drink you know if you know you're driving back you should be responsible enough to not have that beer or whatever it may be um personally i haven't done that yet like i said i know hundreds of people well, okay, not hundreds, but you know what I mean. I know plenty of people that do do that. Um, like I said, they have one drink, and, you know, a couple hours later they're driving. After three hours, they might be fine, right? I don't know. But I'm saying if you, if, you know, you come up and they're, and they're you know, the breathalyzer, and you come up a little bit. Um, the way it works, again, in Nova Scotia, like I was saying, however, is I think we get like a .08 on the breathalyzer. I think that's that counts, and anything below that's a warning. Uh, the warning, I don't know what they do with it, but I think they can suspend your license for a few days. And in some places, they actually take it away permanently, and you'll never get it back no matter what you do. Uh, my old man had lost it um, twice when he was younger, but of course, that's many moons ago. And uh, yeah, like I said, he got hit pretty hard with that. You know, the, the thing about it that I can always believe that if someone did get a DUI, like... You know, like, they're obviously quite intoxicated. I, I personally think that's it. Um, I kind of agree with it. You should know better. And the fact that you drank anyway and drove, I mean, no matter the situation, really proves to me that they, they, they knew the response, they knew the risk, and they did it anyway. And that's it. They should, <laughs> you know what I mean? They should probably uh, pay the price for that. So, I don't know. Um, that's just kind of my thoughts, I guess. I, I just, it's not something I really like to tolerate at all. I don't, I don't really think that's the way to go. Uh, I feel there's rules in place for a reason, and that's one of them. And it's a definitely a good reason. Uh, you can also argue, like, drugs and stuff, because you're still impaired, but, yeah, whatever. But, as I tried to say, I think, in the beginning, and I might have lost my train of thought, um, if you're living under a rock, and you don't know what I'm talking about in general, um, basically, yeah, when you have some, you know, everybody's a little different, but basically when you drink, consume alcohol, um, you get to a point that everybody would call the buzz. So, you know, you're, I wouldn't say you're like lightheaded, but you're kind of feeling good, quote unquote. 
and your senses are dulled and i think that's the biggest reason that anything actually happens within um drinking and driving is the senses right it's absolutely the senses because if you're not paying attention that's definitely where something stupid happens and again the more the more alcohol you're consuming is the more chances that's that's going to happen right because you're going to have a harder time paying attention to what you're doing and especially when you drive at speeds um you know you're going a lot faster than this <laughs> you know two kilometers an hour um then you're then you're really talking a lot of, a really dangerous game and honestly uh, yeah i i honestly feel that you know, if someone does drinking and driving, they get caught. Uh, my personal belief always should be that they should just lose the license and that should be it. Um, you know what I mean? And I think that would be it. There would be, like, there'd be no coming back. Like, that'd be, that'd be put on a record or I, I don't know, whatever. And, um, like, you would go, okay, yeah, listen, I'm, go I'm looking to get my license back. And they would literally see this flag. Nah, sorry, can't do it. That's it. Uh, I know, I think you gotta wait so many years now to do that, and uh, you know, I guess that's great, and they have a bunch of penalties with it, and again, I'm just relating to the um, Canadian laws, uh, other countries obviously are different, but I mean, it's like, you lose your license for a couple years, uh, you know, obviously I think you pay so much to get it back, I think you might even have to do some, like, alcoholic program, like, they really try to get you back onto the right path. And that's good because they, at the same time, though, they're giving you a second chance. And you can't really argue that. Uh, but anyway, let me know what you guys think about that. Um, just a little thoughts video there. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, look, lights out. Nice. And uh, cheers.